Hi. <laughs> Welcome to my pool party and my mini pool in my backyard. Well, hello. Welcome. Um, I know we've never met before and I'm going to try not to be awkward filming this because I've never made a video before and it's really awkward because I have neighbors everywhere. Um, luckily, I have my cats all around for distractions, staring at me. Anyways, so today I was watching a video by this girl named Mary Wright. And it definitely struck a chord with me because it's something that's definitely... I've thought about a lot and even struggled with myself <laughs> and I did question why for a while wondering you know what was wrong with me blah 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 but long story short she made a video saying that she was I think it was 21 and she has no friends or 22 or something and it just sort of made me think about my life and my journey to this point of myself where I feel like you know I'm kind of in the same position I don't really have a lot of close friends I kind of lost a lot of people over the years and you know people have moved away we've grown apart granted I'm like 10 years older than she is so I'm I'm 32 but I don't know it just sort of you know it's something I've thought about before it's not like this is the first time I've ever thought about it but her video just really made me yeah, I don't know, just realize that, you know, I'm not alone in this situation. Obviously, there's a lot of people out there that are in the same position as both of us. You know, we're lonely, you know, we don't have a lot of close connections. And unfortunately, she's not close with her family either, which, you know, I'm grateful that, like, you know, while I'm not as close as I wish we were, I have a better relationship now than I ever have with my family. Um, but I've had to do a lot of growing and, you know, obviously they have two. <laughs> it was a two-way street, I'm not gonna lie. You know, it's hard to mature and better yourself and be surrounded by people that aren't doing the same thing. And by no means am I perfect, by no means am I putting myself on any kind of pedestal because obviously I'm a human being, you know. I like Jenna Marbles quote where she says, you know, I'm human, I'm, you know, I'm not without problems, you know, I've had to do a lot of growing in my life and I know everybody has, you know, it's just the way life works, you know, I don't know what 10 years down the road people are going to want to cancel each other for, but it's kind of scary to think about, you know, the whole cancel culture going on right now, but I digress, it's not why I'm here. I just sympathize with, you know, I guess some people that have to go through that unrightfully. And I don't know. Maybe it's not unrightful. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyways. Um, sorry, I just realized I like flung water all over my electric cord. <laughs> I've been electrocuted before like at least three times. So, yeah gonna be real careful when I get out of here anyways so back to what I was saying 32 not really a lot of friends I mean I'm lucky I'm in a relationship you know I have a boyfriend we've been together for a oh, fiance I should say we've been together for eight years now nine years long time and he's very much my friend you know we're best friends I would say I don't think you could be you know wanting to marry someone or engage them if you couldn't call them your best friend just some of my personal advice you know we talk to each other about pretty much everything but you know I also realize that he's a human too and there's only so much he can take and I can't you know I can't expect to rely on him for for all of my needs and you know all of my emotional needs and whatnot which is where friends come in you know 
And it's been very hard. I think lately, you know, I've realized that part of my problem is that I haven't always been my own best friend, I suppose. And it's strange how quarantine has sort of made me realize, you know, also age and therapy. <laughs> But a lot of things are just coming together and making me realize that life is too short to not enjoy it and not just to kind of go back to being my own friend again and hoping that maybe one day that leads me to, I guess, more friendships down the road. Because I think a lot of my issue growing up was that I had a lot of trauma, I had a lot of abuse and other issues that I was dealing with, that it made it really hard for me, I think, to develop into the person I was supposed to be, if that makes sense. Um, I always knew this, but last year I was finally um, diagnosed with PTSD. And, you know, it's really hard to go through something like that for 15 years and knowing what it is, knowing sort of knowing. I don't think I realized it in the beginning. I thought I was just depressed, you know. I knew I'd been through a traumatic situation because I'd lost my mom when I was 14 or 15. And <clears throat> I lost her in a way that was extremely hard for me to understand and cope with. My mom was basically my best friend. You know, I told her everything. We talked every day, all the time. And, you know, when you're at that age, 14, 15, you know, you're sort of blossoming, you're becoming an adult, you're trying to grow into yourself. And I think while that was very much happening in a lot of ways for me at that age, you know, despite of all the things I'd been through prior to losing my mom, um, but I don't know, it was just like losing her pretty much all but broke me, you know. It was the hardest thing I ever went through. And it traumatized me. And I think, you know, coming from the other side of that and being able to recognize it for what it was, that it was, you know, a traumatic situation. It was a trauma. And I had a lot of trauma, generational family trauma that was, you know, kind of passed down to me as well. So I think losing my mom was just, you know, <laughs> The shit I sing on the shit cake, so to speak, but uh, we'll get into that some other day because it's kind of a long story in and of itself. But um, basically, you know, when I was little, I can remember being kind of shy, you know, like I hung out with my brother. We were, he was born a year after I was, and we lived in kind of a small neighborhood, kind of. Not necessarily out in the middle of nowhere, but it kind of was at the time. I mean, we were still close to, like, the city. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it wasn't a huge developed neighborhood when I was living there. There was a lot of people that were still moving there, so it was like a developing area. And there wasn't a lot of people my age. You know, I remember, like, hanging out with, like, some of the neighbor kids and stuff like that. But I think for the most part... You know, I pretty much, I feel like I kept to myself a lot as a kid. And I, and I hung out with my brother and, you know, my brother's friends, but I was also very shy. So I think it was really hard for me to, like, come out of my shell with people. And I think as I got older, I realized more and more, like, how shy I really was. Because <laughs> I can remember my dad making me, we were at Burger King, and he made me go up to the counter to order my own food. <laughs> And at the time, I don't know, I must have been like six or seven. I don't even know how old I was. But at the time, being as shy as I was, like that to me was like a, not traumatic, but it was just sort of like a, a hugely difficult and scary thing for me to do. And I don't think I knew obviously how to <clears throat> explain that to my dad. You know, I'm a child. You're not really able to explain your emotions, but... Basically, <laughs> excuse me, not Corona. Um, I don't know. It didn't hit me that I was shy, but I, like, that, I just was, you know? 
I was just a shy kid. And now looking back on that, I realized that I was shy. I was very scared and timid of the world and insecure and unsure of myself. And as I got older, you know, I started coming out a little bit more. Like I remember I moved to this other neighborhood. I think this was like the second neighborhood we lived in. And there was some girls my age that lived around there. And my dad, <laughs> being my dad, <laughs> He must have saw these girls outside hanging out, knowing they were my age. He was like, hey, you know, come meet my daughter. <laughs> oh my God, I was like mortally, mortally embarrassed because at the time, I don't know, I must have been like nine or 10, 11 maybe, I don't even know. But I was still playing with like toys, you know. I love building like little moats in my backyard and playing with animals and making little animal scenes. Like, I don't know, I was a weird kid. I spent a lot of time alone. I think I was just kind of a loner. I used my imagination a lot. Um, apparently my personality type is INFP, if that gives you any, you know, insight. But <laughs> yeah, I was just always just a very shy, kind of introverted, you know, kid. But anyways, so back to that story. Uh, my dad, I invited these girls over into my house and I see them and I'm immediately just like, excuse me, dad, <laughs> the fuck are you doing? You know, he's like trying to set me up with, on a play date. And at the time I resented him for it because I was just like, I just thought it was weird. And you know, I didn't want to make friends like forcefully, like cause my dad, like, I don't know. I was just really shy and I thought it was weird and awkward, but lo and behold, we somehow became friends, luckily, because they were the, you know, two girlfriends that I really had that I got close to growing up. And I probably lived in that house for a good couple of years. So me, her name was Adrian, and this other girl was Tiffany. We always hung out almost every day. I mean, I think we were like attached to the hip because I think we all lived in the same neighborhood, if I'm not mistaken. But eventually adrian moves and then i end up moving and it turns out i end up moving down the street um from this girl tiffany the girl that my dad had introduced me to so that was really exciting and whatnot you know and i was i'm always i'm the kind of person that you know i don't make a lot of friends like i do get along with a lot of people i like people i'm interested in people i like learning about different people and different cultures and you know different ways people live and whatnot you know but I'm also shy so that kind of <laughs> makes it hard for me to like really get to know people I guess kind of I'm like a wallflower I'm like an observer you know I like I observe a lot of people and I notice things and I analyze things a lot I guess because I'm shy I don't know and I think people have maybe mistaken me for being stuck up because I am shy at times but I swear, you know, it's just me being shy, just me being quiet, not knowing what to say, being afraid of judgment, you know. And it's not because I'm judging other people, it's because I'm literally sitting there just like, like so scared, I have no thoughts in my head. <laughs> oh, it's terrible what shyness does to you. You know, like I can remember being in interviews and just, you know, my whole body, I could feel just like stiffening up my neck stiffening up and like shaking <laughs> and just being so ungodly nervous and it's so ridiculous really but I don't I don't really know why I'm that way I don't know I'm just a nervous person I'm shy and I'm nervous um but anyways me and this girl Tiffany end up becoming friends and I think at this point I was entering like middle school you know, and I had like school friends. I remember going to sleepovers and things like that. And like having a decent amount of like close enough friends. But I think every time, you know, you switch schools, you grow up and you stop seeing certain people because you don't live around them anymore. You know, you just kind of lose touch. And back then, you know, people didn't have computers and cell phones. So I think it was just a lot easier to lose touch with people. So then fast forward, you know, my high school years and you know I'm starting to really come into myself I think I'm playing sports you know I'm playing softball 
I'm not in a whole lot of clubs. I wasn't very club oriented, but I was, I was athletic. Um, and not because I necessarily wanted to be, but I think my dad kind of wanted me to be an athlete. So I did that for a while. Deep down, I wanted to be an artist, you know. I'm realizing now, like I just, I'm just a creative person. I like to create things. I don't really like to, I don't know, do too much of the numbers, <laughs> things like that, numbers, you know, mathematics, but anyways. So fast forward to 14, my mom dies. Trump, you know, very traumatic situation. Basically, I come out of that traumatized. So from like 14 on, I don't know. I was just in this haze of like PTSD where I think I was depressed. I was super anxious. I was hyper vigilant. You know, I would have flashbacks. I was angry a lot. I pushed people away constantly. And unfortunately, I think I just, you know, I learned a lot of bad coping mechanisms for my father you know over the years because he's not very good at coping with things that have happened to him you know I think he's part of the reason why I have some generational trauma that's been passed down to me because he's been through a lot himself so I don't blame him but I do realize that a lot of that is just from him not having the opportunity or not not knowing or whatever it was, you know, to help himself back in the day. So I am thankful that, you know, I have the internet, I have books, you know, I started going to therapy like 15 years ago. So probably four years, four or five years after my mom died. Um, you know, that was the other thing is after my mom died, my dad never took me to therapy. Um, you know, we never really got help. And I think we all just started, me and my family I should say, just started like drifting apart from each other. And I was becoming 18, I was becoming an adult, I was starting to, you know, get into smoking and drinking and things that I shouldn't have been doing at that age, but I don't know, I guess I was just spiraling and I didn't know what to do, I didn't know how to cope and that was my coping mechanism, was smoking and drinking and lashing out and not taking care of myself and just in survival mode constantly like that's all I knew to do was just have a job and try to survive so looking back on that time in my life I'm like you know I can see now why that person that I was pushed a lot of people away and why that person was so hurt and you know I can't help but worry and I'm sure I know that I've hurt people myself because I was hurt. I know I did. You know, and I know I met a lot of hurting people and a lot of people that knew I was hurting and would try to take advantage of me. But that's just the nature of, you know, being, I guess, sort of in like a victim mindset. You know, I wasn't surviving. I wasn't, I was surviving. I wasn't thriving, you know. I was all but broken and I was just trying to survive for years, you know. And I think as that went on, I just became more and more isolated. I stopped seeing my family as much. I stopped hanging out with a lot of people. You know, I was very weary on trusting anybody in who I allowed to be my friend. You know, I was afraid to get close to people when I did. I was fiercely loyal and I was very close because I was afraid to lose them, you know, and looking back now knowing that I have PTSD, you know, been diagnosed and whatnot, and I've been going through therapy now for the last six months specifically for PTSD and, you know, it's really opened my eyes in a lot of ways and made me realize that, you know, I was a very flawed person. And I think it's okay, you know, I didn't, I didn't mean to be, I didn't ask for certain things to happen to me and I didn't know how to handle them. So that's just what happened. It's just what I became. And I had to learn that eventually. I had to learn that I was being an asshole sometimes, that I was being insensitive, that I was being mean because I was in pain. 
And I think that was the hardest thing for me to realize and admit about myself was that, you know, a lot of this was caused by me because I was just hurting so bad, you know? And it's really hard to know that about myself. It's hard to grow up, you know, and realize things. But, you know, it's also good. <laughs> I'm glad I made it this far. I'm glad I got to see, you know, the other side of, of trauma in a lot of ways, you know. I'm finally at a point in my life where I'm, I feel stable, you know, I have a house. I feel more centered in myself than I've ever felt. I have a boyfriend that's been by my side for eight years now, you know. I've been going to therapy and I've just been trying to do things that I want to do for myself, including throwing myself this little mini pool party and talking to you guys because I don't know I'm hoping maybe somebody can relate and I don't know that I'm ever I'm gonna edit this video because I kind of just want to leave it the way it is I'm trying not to keep it too long because I can honestly ramble forever sorry about that I'm sorry if something didn't make sense if you need me to explain anything please ask um, I'll try to make a video next time that's maybe a little bit more sequential and not so all over the place. Um, but like I said, this is my first video I've ever made. I am shy. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like it. I'm in a bathing suit. I'm now posting a video on YouTube, but hey, this is very much out of my comfort zone. And I'm shy, but you know, I also don't take myself too seriously, so... You know, it is what it is. Hopefully somebody can relate to this. Hopefully somebody understands. Hopefully I'm not rambling too much. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, I guess just let me know what you think. You know, like, what's... What's your... You know, what's your life like right now? What are... You know, what are your feelings on what I said? <laughs> you know, do you have anything like PTSD or, you know, depression, maybe, you know, I don't know that I can help you. I wish I could. I'm not a doctor by any means, but, you know, I just wanted to put it out there to hope that maybe somebody could relate to what I'm saying and, I don't know, maybe feel a little bit better about themselves and know that there is hope and there is, you know, opportunity to get help and there is, you know, still time to make friends, you know, and I think the biggest thing about that is, you know, being vulnerable, I think, and that's one thing I've really struggled with is being vulnerable with people, which is exactly why I'm making this video, because I want to try and be a little bit more open about myself and a little bit more vulnerable and hope that maybe, you know, maybe I can meet some great people out of it. Maybe somebody can relate to me. Maybe I can help somebody a little bit, because honestly, I think that's all I want to do, is just try to help people. You know, life's a bitch, we all struggle, you know, hopefully, maybe we can just be there for each other. <laughs> I don't know. I hope this isn't stupid or corny. I feel a little corny, but anyways, good talk. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my pool party. Next time.